no one person is supposed to know everything, and, and that is the absolute truth. Uh, my next speaker, though, does know a lot about a lot of things, and that is uh, Robert Kaplan. Uh, among his many accomplishments, Robert S. Kaplan currently serves as Professor of Management Practice at Harvard Business School. I've read a lot of those books. As co-chairman of the Draper Richards Kaplan Foundation and as senior advisor to Berkshire Partners, LLC. Kaplan studied for his MBA at Harvard after receiving his BS from the University of Kansas. Kaplan has held several diverse positions at Goldman Sachs Group was a founding co-chair of the Harvard Neurodiscovery Center Advisory Board, and was a co-chair of the Executive Committee for Harvard University Office of Sustainability Greenhouse Gas Emission Implement Implementation Planning. Try say that, saying that three times fast. Uh, in addition, Kaplan is a member of the boards of the Harvard Medical School, the Harvard Management Company, the Ford Foundation, and the State Street Corporation. Kaplan has also been appointed by the governor of Kansas as a member of the Kansas Healthcare Policy Authority Board, is a co-chairman of the board of Project ALS, and co-chairman of the board of the Teak Fellowship. I don't think there's anything that this man hasn't or cannot do. It is with great honor that I introduce Robert Kaplan. My goodness. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm wow, I'm okay. I'm Ooh. All right, I'm going to stand up here so I give every other speaker, as Eliza did, an excuse to stand up here. All right, this speech is about you. All right, you ready to talk about you? So go come back to where, from wherever you are and start thinking about you. How many of you want to be leaders? How many of you are leaders? All right. Let me give you my two cents. People ask me all the time, you're supposed to teach this, you're supposed to teach leadership. What is leadership? Well, I actually had to think of what, what I thought it was. And here's what I think leadership is. Leadership is about figuring out what you believe and then having the courage to act on it. That's it. Okay? Figure out what you believe and have the courage to act on it. By that definition, there are millions of leaders around the world, in this country, in this room. You could be a single mother. You could be in the military serving overseas. You could be a policeman or woman. You could be a social entrepreneur. You could be an entrepreneur running a business. On the other hand, you could manage thousands of people and not be a leader. And many of us see people in positions of powers and we say, boy, they're frustrating. They're not showing leadership because we don't see them searching for truly what they believe and having the courage to act on it. Okay, so simple enough. At this level in life, how do you become a leader? And that's what I work in teaching leadership. Try, we try to teach it. And I do think leadership can be learned. A lot of people say, you can't teach it. You've got to be born with it. The, tr the truth is, it, you have to learn, in my opinion, you, it, it's great to be born with skills, but you have to learn to figure out who you are, not the sales pitch, I mean who you are, and what you believe, and then have the guts to act on it. And there's a lot of forces that discourage you, as Eliza talked about, from acting on what you believe. All right, so for me, uh, the good news, I've never had the answers, and I stopped trying to have all the answers long time ago. I did realize long time ago the key to being a leader is learning and being open to learn and to be willing to ask questions and to ask the right questions. So, on that happy note, let me give you four questions that I would challenge you to think about over the next number of years and maybe even this weekend, okay? And I'll start with first one. Can you write down on a piece of paper your strengths, and your weaknesses, okay? Most of us, by the way, including me at various points in time, can't. Why? Because you're changing, your jobs are changing, you're getting older, your challenges are changing, and worse, the world is always changing. Even if you got things nailed, the world changes. All of a sudden, you have new weaknesses relative to what you need to do, okay? 
And the hardest reason why most of us cannot write down our strengths and our weaknesses in particular is you don't know. You have to seek out someone who observes you and who cares enough about you to tell you things you don't want to hear. That's a pretty hard thing to find. They're willing to tell you something you don't want to hear and maybe even risk upsetting you. In order to do that, somebody's got to care about you a lot. But in order to activate that person, you have to be willing to ask for advice. Okay, so first question. Can you write down on a piece of paper your strengths and weaknesses? This sadly will be a running list I would recommend you keep for the rest of your life, and it will keep changing. But most importantly, can you get yourself in the habit of asking people to observe you and invite them to tell you things about you that you may not want to hear? Do you do that? Second question, what are your passions? Can you write down what your passions are? And what do I mean by that? Uh, is there a task that you really love? When, another way to think about this, your passions, which helps people, when were you at your best? You really shined. You felt great about yourself. You really felt great. And boy, you say, I was really good. Man, I was good there. Okay? What were you doing? What kinds of things were you working on? Can you write down on a piece of paper what you think your passions are. Now, the fact of the matter is, you gotta try new things to learn. You know, everything you try, you learn something about your passions. But the biggest issue about passions and the dream, which we just heard about, is peer pressure. Peer pressure and conventional wisdom. You go and tell a friend, I think I wanna be a blank, or I, I wanna be a social entrepreneur, and they look at you and say, yeah, you don't wanna do that, it's stupid. You know, make money or you, know, do, you don't want to do that. What is that? Anyhow, I don't even know what that is. I don't want to do that. And you say, oh, maybe I better not do that. You've got to be aware of the power of peer pressure because they stop you from dreaming your dream. So think about when you're at your best. What do you love to do? And, and don't let people distract you from searching for a career or for a job that allows you to do some of those things that you think you love. Now listen, you may try some things and you say, I thought I loved it, but I don't love it, fine. But you've got to try to dream the dream. You're gonna be far more successful and much more likely to get that conviction I talked about as a leader and know what you believe if you're doing something you care about, okay? So that's the second question for you. Third question, can you write down on a piece of paper, you're gonna need a piece of paper to do this, I, I do acknowledge that, and probably something to write with. Um, can you write down what your values are? Okay, and, and it's a little amorphous values. It's family, hard work, kindness, community, uh, helping others. Those to me are values, a little amorphous. But the second part is not so amorphous. Can you write down boundaries that you know you will not cross? Simple, I will not lie, I will not cheat, I will not steal. Okay, you say, what's the big, why bother? I'd urge you to start thinking about those things and discussing them with your friends and those people who tell you things you don't want to hear, start discussing that now, why? It is just a matter of time for everyone in this room, unfortunately, before you get in a situation where a very influential peer, boss, client, fund, maybe a donor, Maybe somebody wants, you're trying to get money from, they're gonna, they're gonna influence you to do something that makes you feel a little uncomfortable, you feel queasy about. If you have not thought about your values and your boundaries when that moment happens, and it'll happen in a nanosecond, you're liable to take an action that you deeply regret, and you look back and say, God, how did I do that? That was a terrible thing to do, and I'm a good person. How could I do something that was that bad? because you hadn't thought about it. The world is full of a lot of pressures and forces. Start writing these things down now. You will be far more able to, when somebody tries to get you to do something that makes you feel uncomfortable, slow down, ask questions, push back. But you can only do that if you've thought about it and waiting till the moment happens, it's too late. Think about it now. Keep it going indefinitely. Last, last part. 
Do you practice three things, which we never talk about in this world? We talk about skills, we talk about all sorts of stuff. Do you practice self-disclosure, listening, and asking for advice? We can all do that. What do I mean by self-disclosure? I'm not talking about your, all of us have, including me, the sales pitch. You, you just heard the sales pitch, which was in my, my resume. He did this and he did that. And that's not Rob. Unfortunately, sadly, I wish that were me. My mother would like to think that was me, but that ain't me. The real me, not, not as pretty a story all the time. The real you is not as pretty a story. I'm willing to acknowledge it. And if you're a leader, you have to. You have to talk about your self-doubt, your fears, where you screwed up, okay? Self-disclosure, why? It helps people understand you better, all right? It also releases a huge burden on you to be perfect, because you, you're not, and none of us are. We make mistakes all the time. And as a leader, you, it pays to acknowledge it. Second, are you able to ask a question and then listen? particularly to try to understand someone else. Third, are you able to ask for advice, particularly about one of those areas of self-doubt? First, you have to tell somebody that self-doubt, and then you've got to be willing to ask for advice about how to deal with that self-doubt. Why do I mention these three things? The biggest thing you will have to fight in your life, and as a leader, even though you're surrounded by thousands of people, the biggest thing you'll have to fight is isolation being alone, feeling alone. These three skills, if you learn to practice them, will keep you from being alone. When you are alone, you can make terrible decisions. Your perception gets all messed up. Your judgment gets messed up. And it's hard to build an organization or do something to achieve that dream. By your, nobody does it by themselves, I assure you. Self-disclosure, listening, ask for advice. Okay, so I'll end with two quotes that I've been using for years and, you know, why stop now? All right, the first one. Not everything that counts can be counted. And not everything that can be counted counts. All of us are saying, you know, when we, we look at people, oh, uh, companies, they're making so much money, or people, he did this or she did that. Adherence to ideals are the most important thing. That's what makes a leader, in my opinion. Accomplishments come and go. Metrics come and go. What are your ideals? What do you believe in? That's the most important thing. Great organizations, and I can tell you what we do at Draper, at Draper Richards, and what we're trying, we're looking for people with adherence to ideals, okay? We're looking for people trying to make a positive impact on the world, and that's what you're trying to do, and that's ultimately what endures, and so, just remember that. Don't be so impressed or too impressed by I accomplished this or I accomplished that for any of us. It's what do you believe in and what positive impact you're making. It may not show up in the box score, but that doesn't mean it's any less valuable. That's what makes a great organization, second, and a great leader. Two, here's one from Kansas where I'm from, as you heard. How many legs does a cow have if you call its tail a leg? How many legs, I'm, you're horrified at this point. The organizers are now horrified. Uh, how many legs does a cow have if you call its tail a leg? The answer is four. Just because you call its tail a leg does not make it a leg, okay? This is some serious, this is what we're teaching across the river at the business school. Uh, here's the point. Lots of people say, just do this, and every, oh, everybody agrees on this, or everybody agrees on that, and you sit there and you say, and everybody's nodding, including you. You're nodding, and you don't know what they're talking about, yet you're still nodding. You ever done that? What are you doing? Have the courage to say, I don't know, I don't understand, and the best, I was wrong. I changed my mind. That is a sign of strength. And have the backbone to admit, I actually don't know what you're talking about. I'm, so, I'm sorry, but I don't understand what you just said, even though everybody's nodding, okay? That's critically important. You've all got a bright future. Your, your future's ahead of you. And one of my favorite movies, which I can't help myself, I keep this on the wall in my office, from Benjamin Button, okay? It's never too late or too early to be whoever you want. Start whenever you want. 
I hope you live a life you're proud of. And if you're not, I hope you'll have the courage to start all over again. Thank you.